eat all you can. Unlimited rice, bottomless soft drinks, all you can eat. Wow, it seems eat all you can buffets have become hugely popular. They all sell the promise of unlimited food. But who can eat more than one normal sized meal anyway? offer the opportunity to eat all we can, our digestive capacity limits our actual food consumption. To find out why we can't just eat anything and everything we want in one sitting, let's listen to Professor Maria Rosario Wood, head of the science training team of Miriam College Growth Upgrading Research Office and an active member of Climate Action Network Southeast Asia, as she explains the amazing process of digestion to her students who are always hungry for knowledge and information. smell good. Hey, Jago, why didn't you buy any? I told you, man, I'm trying to lose a few pounds. I'll just content myself with smelling them. Uh-uh, no way. If you really wanted to lose weight, you wouldn't even be smelling. Yeah, I think right. You're already tempting yourself. Oh, oh. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Hi guys. Mom. Sure, thank you. You know, Ma'am, I just read in a health magazine that when you see or even smell food, the brain starts to send signals that put your digestive system on alert. Yeah, I read that too. The mouth starts to water and the stomach starts to contract to be ready to receive the food. Nah, stop teasing me, guys. We all know that eating and digestion begins when you put food in our mouth. What do you think, ma'am? Actually, the digestive process starts even before you put food in your mouth. It begins when you smell something really irresistible or when you see your favorite food that you know will taste good. Just by smelling, you start to salivate, and you prepare your digestive system for your first bite. The process of breaking down food into smaller molecules that can be absorbed by cells is called digestion. Digestion has two main functions. One is to break up big pieces of food into tiny particles. And two, to break the tiny particles of food into molecules that will dissolve in body fluids and pass through the cell walls to be used by the cells. Digestion occurs in two stages, mechanical and chemical. Um, ma'am, what happens in the mechanical phase? In the mechanical phase, food undergoes or is acted upon physically and mechanically. To break up mechanically means that you tear, bite, cut, grind, and mash large bits of food into a fine mixture. These actions are done by your teeth and tongue through the contractions of the stomach and through the movements of the intestines. Mom, what happens in the chemical phase? At the chemical phase, digestive enzymes are needed to hydrolyze and break down starch into glucose molecules, proteins into amino acids, and fats into fatty acids and glycerol. The action of enzymes in the process constitute the chemical stage of digestion. Can you name the parts of the digestive system? The mouth and the... the esophagus. We have the stomach and small intestine. And large intestine and anus. 
Very good! The accessory organs assisting these major parts are salivary glands, pancreas, liver, and gallbladder. Let's start with the digestion in the mouth. Upon entering your mouth, the food is physically broken into bits by your teeth. Mucus comes from the cells lining the tongue, it moistens the food you eat, and facilitates swallowing of the broken pieces. Saliva is another secretion that originates from the glands located at the different areas near the mouth. It lubricates the food and secretes an enzyme, chylin, also known as salivary amylase, to convert starch into maltose. Your tongue keeps food to be chewed by the teeth inside your mouth and pushes the food to the back of your mouth to be swallowed. Mom, that covers the mouth. But what about the esophagus? When you have chewed and mix the food in your mouth, you swallow it and it goes down your alimentary canal. The food goes to the pharynx when muscles push the food down your throat. At this point, a structure called the pigmentis closes over your trachea to prevent food from entering your respiratory tract. It prevents us from choking. Very good, Louise. Esophagus is a long tube that carries the food down to your stomach for temporary storage. It walls some layers of cells called mucosa. These cells secrete mucus for mechanical lubrication of food. Peristalsis is a rhythmic, wave-like, muscular action that pushes the food further down the alimentary canal. Mmm! Now the food weight is in our stomach. The stomach is a large J-shaped organ found at the end of the esophagus, beneath the diaphragm on the upper part of your body. An opening, the cardiac sphincter, closes and opens to allow the flow of food from the esophagus to the stomach. The stomach is a storage organ for the food you ingest and secretes gastric juice which contains an acid, hydrochloric acid, and enzymes. But ma'am, how long does the food usually stay in our stomach? Food usually remains in the stomach for two to three hours. Ma'am, where does final digestion take place? It is in the small intestines where final digestion and absorption take place. The small intestine has three parts. Duodenum, upper 20 centimeters long tube connected to the stomach. Jejunum, about 2.5 meters long. And ilium, the longest half that is coiled through the abdominal cavity. Ma'am, aside from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, and small intestine, are there other organs that help us in digestion? As a matter of fact, we have the liver, the pancreas, and the gallbladder that help in intestinal digestion. Pancreas is a digestive gland that serves two functions. One, secretes hormones insulin and glucagon that regulate the balance of your blood glucose. And the second, secretes pancreatic juice which empties into the duodenum part of the small intestines. The small intestine completes the process of chemical digestion. Within the organ, the digested food diffuses through the epithelial lining of the wall into the bloodstream.
the soluble food materials are now ready to supply every cell of your body with the nutrients it needs in order to produce energy. The undigested food materials become watery and pass from the small intestine into the large intestine. The large intestines consist of the colon, the cecum, the rectum, and the anus. Ma'am, what is the function of the colon? The function of the colon is to absorb water from the undigested food materials that it receives from your small intestines. The last 20 to 30 centimeters of your colon is the rectum a muscular cavity which terminates in an opening called anus. The anus forms the end of your alimentary canal or digestive tube where waste of digestion leaves the body. These remaining food materials which then become more solid are called feces. Okay, so now we know where our food goes from start to finish. But what makes us feel hungry in the first place? Several factors contribute to whether we feel hungry or not. Stress and other strong emotions can cause some people to either eat more or less than they usually would. Hormonal changes also have an effect on appetite. Hormonal changes? Yes, endocrine system play a major role in the various changes in your body, including appetite, eating behaviors, and body weight. These changes are triggered by chemicals called hormones, which are secreted by your endocrine glands. There are two kinds of glands, exocrine or duct glands, responsible for external secretions, endocrine or ductless glands, responsible for internal secretions. The substances of your exocrine glands pass through a channel or duct to the site where they take effect. Examples of these glands are the salivary glands of the mouth and the gastric glands of the stomach. They secrete saliva and hydrochloric acid respectively. Both pass through the duct. Mom. How are hormones formed and how do they function? Hormones are formed from substances taken from the blood. Ma'am, what are the major glands that make up the human endocrine system? The endocrine glands are the pituitary, the thyroid, the parathyroid, the thymus, the adrenal, the pancreas, and the gonads. Now, let's start with the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland, or hypophysis, lies at the base of your brain. Although only as large as a child's marble, it controls the functioning of almost all the endocrine glands. The anterior lobe of your pituitary gland secretes at least seven hormones. What about the thyroid gland? The thyroid gland is a soft organ shaped like a butterfly or an H. It is situated beneath your larynx. Its two lobes lie on either side of your windpipe. The gland secretes the hormones thyroxine and calcitonin. Thyroxine increases the oxygen consumption or speeds up the metabolic rate of nearly all the cells in your body. Calcitonin prevents the release of calcium from your bones, thus lowering the levels of phosphate and calcium in your blood. Mom, what hormones does thymus gland secrete? The thymus gland is located at the upper part of the chest, just below the neck. It consists of two lobes. Two hormones are believed to be secreted by the thymus gland. Promine, which promotes growth, is one. Retin, which retards growth, is another. Ma'am, 
We know that adrenaline gives us the boost we need when we're in times of trouble. Like when we're sick or stressed. Yeah, but ma'am, where can we find the adrenal glands in our body? There is a small gland on top of each of your kidneys. These are your adrenal glands. Each adrenal gland is divided into two parts. An outer portion called cortex and an inner portion called medulla. Hormone secreting cells are found in the islets of Langerhans located all over your pancreas. Hormones insulin and glucagon from this gland, like other hormones, pass directly into your bloodstream. In the liver, sugar from your blood is stored as glycogen for future use, and in the muscles, sugar breaks down to release energy. And finally, we have the gonads. The male and the female reproductive systems also contain glands. Wow! Endocrine glands are really bossy. They tell our cells what to do. But actually, that's a good thing. Without the endocrine system and the hormones they release, your body wouldn't know when to do important things. Even though the digestive system and endocrine system are separate systems, they often work together to help the body function properly. That's right! Oops, lunch is over. Come on guys. Bye, Bye mom! Bye! The digestive system and endocrine system are important parts of our body. Without them, we can grow properly and stay healthy at the same time. That's why it's important that we help our digestive system and other body systems by drinking water and eating a healthy food. The kind of food we eat and the amount of food we consume play key roles in maintaining good health. Malnutrition occurs when a person doesn't have enough food to eat or doesn't eat enough healthy food. So, when you're offered the opportunity to eat all you can, you must remember that it's not just how much you eat, but what you eat. Knowing what makes us healthy empowers us. And being empowered, we realize our self-worth and we have confidence in our abilities. I hope you enjoyed learning today, K-Hubbers. Bye!